Hi, I'm Michelle Levitt, podcaster and marketing director for Heil Sound. Let's talk microphone elements, placement, polar patterns, and rear rejection. Microphone element placement plays a critical role when talking about polar patterns. You can't know where your polar pattern is or how it behaves if you don't know where the microphone element is. There are two types of element placement, in-fire or side address. An in-fire element captures audio from the end of the microphone. People always ask me what kind of microphone I use. This is the PR30 and this is the microphone that I'm using today. A side address element captures audio from the side of the microphone. So now that you know about element placement, we can talk about polar patterns. Every microphone has a polar pattern. This is a polar pattern chart that you might find on a manufacturer's website. So what are they? The polar pattern determines how a microphone will pick up audio. This matters because depending on how you intend to use the microphone, the polar pattern can help or hurt your audio. The polar pattern is the area around the microphone element that will capture audio. Note that at the top there is a zero. This zero represents talking straight into the mic element, or what we call on axis. And 180 degrees represents the very back of the microphone. You will hear people talk about the rejection of a microphone at 180 degrees off axis. This is what that's referring to. Anytime you get further away from zero, you are further off axis. We will talk more about rear rejection later. So now you can see why it's important that you know where the microphone element is housed inside the body of the microphone. Let's look at an example. This is the PR40. The PR40 is an in-fire element. If we could see through the PR40, it would look like this and we could see that the element is way up close to the end grill. To understand polar pattern diagrams, we start at the end of the element. There are different types of polar patterns and the types of polar patterns dictate their application. This is the polar pattern that we saw before. This particular microphone has a cardioid polar pattern. That means it picks up audio out of the end of the microphone element and slightly off axis, but it does not pick up sound out of the sides or back of the microphone. These are really ideal for podcasters. They're very directional and exhibit great rear rejection, so you don't have to soundproof a room to use them. I'll talk more about rear rejection in a moment. The supercardioid is going to have the same application suggestions as a cardioid. It is actually more directional and picks up less audio from the sides, but you have to be aware that it can pick up some audio out of the back of the microphone. Omnidirectional polar patterns pick up audio all around the microphone very evenly. You typically see these used for in-the-field journalism. They are ideal for this application because they can be pointed at an audio source without much attention being paid to exact mic placement. These are not great if you will be recording at a desk. They will pick up every paper shuffle or keyboard click. If you are using a lapel mic, it is most likely an omnidirectional mic. If you have ever used one of these mics, you will know that it is not good for recording more than one person for a podcast because you are just going to end up with a lot of noise in the mix. Bidirectional polar patterns can be used to record more than one audio source at once, but they are very directional. So you have to carefully place the microphone and don't move. I know what I just said sounds very tempting if you're doing a podcast with a guest or co-host. The problem with using a bi-directional mic to record two podcasters is that you have a single audio track and you can't edit volume levels or remove noise from the non-speaking podcaster. You really need one microphone per person being recorded and you need to record each of those people in their own audio track. That way, when your co-host sneezes into their microphone while you are saying the most brilliant thing you've ever said, you can just cut them out. Now that you understand how the microphone picks up audio, let's talk about what it doesn't pick up. By the way, this concept really only applies to dynamic microphones. Reality, here is my Wizard of Oz moment. You saw my old podcast studio a few moments ago. These days, I work in an office space, probably very similar to what most people have. The reason I recommend dynamic cardioid and supercardioid microphones to most podcasters is because of their rear noise rejection. Rear noise rejection refers to a microphone's ability to reject other audio signals outside of its polar pattern. Most of us don't have the resources to have a soundproof studio. The reality is, most of you are like me, and recording at home or in an office somewhere. We have pets, we have kids, we have roommates, or we have neighbors who mow their grass five times a week. No matter what environment you are in, rear noise rejection will keep your mic from picking up your co-hosts, keyboards, or papers shuffling. I also once recorded a podcast on the trade show floor of the NAM show, the largest trade show in the music industry that has over 100,000 attendees, and it sounded great. The reason I'm able to record in these unforgiving environments is because I use dynamic microphones that exhibit great rear rejection. This would not be possible with a condenser. For more information on podcasting and Heilsound microphones, visit heilsound.com slash microphones 101.